Well, our grill is making progress, not as much as I had hoped for for this week, but we're almost done. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, before you start doing the stuff for today's video, I would recommend going through making sure you've got your black paint coat really good, covered really well, and that your rack fits because the painting of the rack does make the wood swell a bit. So it might be a little tight. If it's too tight, sand it back and finish it off. What I did, I did have to sand mine back somewhat on the edges. And then I just used a black Sharpie pen to fill in the color on those areas because the Sharpie won't make the wood swell and it, it's fine for those small spots. So now my rack fits and this is all painted and now it's time to add our side firebox if you choose to do that. Now remember we have this little lid for our fake opening. So we want to make sure that's on the front. So I'm going to stand my grill up. I'll tell you how, show you how I'm going to do first. I'm going to line this up so that the opening on this, I'll put my thumbnail right below the opening, is about like that. And I'm going to, and I see I have one more spot of paint I will have to, uh, I have to fix, but that's okay. I am going to eyeball this. I'm going to put quite a bit of tacky glue in there. And off camera, I will probably finesse this a little bit just to make sure it's exactly where I want it. And I want it hanging down so that the side of the grill is a, there's about a third or half of my side firebox hanging below the side of the grill. That was lovely. I'm not sure what that noise was outside, but we're going to ignore it. <laughs> not sure if it came across the camera or not. All right, I'm going to let that glue dry. When that's dry, we'll come back and we'll go to our next step. All right, I have some of that really heavy cardstock that we've used for the exterior parts of our grill. And I have cut it into some pieces. These three pieces are one inch by one and a quarter inches. And then I have six pieces that are cut two, by a, two inches by a half inch. And these are way oversized these six, but I felt it would be easier to cut them down to size than to try to line up what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is glue these together in sets. We're going to glue the three that are the rectangles, and the sizes will be listed in the blog post, so if you miss the size, don't, don't panic. You can always go over there and check it. And once again, I'm using a nice thick tacky glue. And I'm going to do my best to get the edges of this lined up. Although this particular piece, we aren't going to see again. It will be completely hidden when we get done. This, I didn't think, I don't think I mentioned, I am, what we are making now is going to be a side shelf to go on the side of the grill so that the doll family has some place to put stuff when they're grilling. And um, I've been kind of thinking about how to do this particular step for a couple of, for actually for a couple of weeks, trying to figure out the best way. And this occurred to me today. Now, if my voice sounds a little off, I apologize. I've got a very sore throat this week. I think it's allergy related, but I am going to push through and get our grill put together. So although it may be a slightly shorter video and we may be doing more next week. Again, I'm not sure. I'll try and get this done today, this week, but I don't know. So I'm going to make two rectangles out of these six pieces, two, two of them with three layers each. I'm going to put a weight on top of everything and get and let them dry completely. And when they're dry, I'll come back and we'll go to the next step. All right, we're gonna start with these strips that we cut. And I, we really only needed to make one, and I'll make that correction in the um, blog post. I wasn't sure how well this was gonna work. So measure down from 3 fourths of an inch 
from one end and make sure that you're marking, marking straight. It helps if you have a grid ruler like I've got here. In fact, I'm going to line it up with the back side. We do have extra, so if you mess up, it's not a huge deal. You can go ahead and um, you know use the other one. <laughs> now I found that my scissors work just fine as long as I go slow and hold my scissors nice and straight. So we'll have that much left from each one. Then take this and cut from one corner to the other. It's it's going to be pretty close to on. We will need to do some sanding when they're done. Now, take one, kind of fit them together first. If one of them is curving, make it so it curves like this one is curving that way, this top one. So make that the side that I glue to the other one. That'll help to flatten it out. Hold it in my fingers. I've got my glue. And this is really sticky glue because this is the glue that we used yesterday to glue this together. It's been sitting covered overnight. Um, this is early morning, that was mid-afternoon, so probably about 15, 16 hours ago. Now line up the two straight edges. The This edge and this edge, <clears throat> excuse me, need to be lined up. Because those are the ones that are going to be in contact. Then take two clamps, one for the top and one for this point and set that aside to dry. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I have some medium weight cardstock. This is a scrap left over from one of my Cricut projects. I am going to make a mark, make a pencil line, a quarter inch from this edge. We're not going to use the whole thing. You could have a much smaller scrap. This just happened to be a piece I could cut free from one, from a piece that was on my table. We're going to do that. Now we've got that rectangle that we made yesterday. We made earlier in the video. Spread a nice thin layer. And like I said, it's early morning, so of course my hands are shaking. But you guys know that's the way it works here. First thing in the morning, my hands shake more than later. All right, a nice thin coat. You don't want very much because we don't want this to bubble. That's why we're using a nice thick glue. Now, get this lined up with that corner. I'm going to turn it over. Use that to kind of take any air bubbles that might be there. And now I'm going to put my ruler on it, and this is probably the heaviest thing on my table. I might find something heavier off camera. I'm going to put a weight on that to help it dry flat. I'm going to let that get dry. When it is pretty much dried all the way, I'll come back and we'll go to the next step. All right, this glue has had plenty of time to dry, and you can see it's nice and smooth. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. No bubbles, because I used a small amount of glue and made sure it was really fastened down tight. Now I'm going to line up my quarter inch line with the edge of that heavy cardstock that we glued together. Draw there. And draw that. Now we have <clears throat> the pieces for our shelf. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to fold this down first, kind of first pre-fold it here. Now I'm going to flip in here and here. And there. 
Now I'm actually going to pause it for just a second. Just be patient. I need to take a picture of that for the blog post. <clears throat> Sorry. All right. That way I've got a picture for you guys to see on the blog. I don't normally do that. Normally I try to take the pictures when I'm not filming, but I'm not going to stop and come back to this. Now we are going to get our glue out. Ow, I just stuck my finger in the glue. We are going to fold this up. It's okay if they're not perfectly matched. We can trim it a little bit if we need to, and we're going to glue it in position. Tucking that tab in behind the side. probably go ahead and hold on to this for a few minutes off camera and then I will repeat the same thing on the other end making sure that my edges come down nice and straight and form a nice straight basically box around that shelf that we made. So I'm going to get this set up so it will stay when I let go of it. Repeat that here and then this glue needs to dry so I'll be back when it dries. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. I've got a couple of corners that didn't glue, glue perfectly straight. And what I'm going to do is trim this one corner. The others I'm not so worried about. Because I'll just make this long side the back. The long side is the back. And what this is going to do, it's going to fit right in here. Right like that. So, we have our two triangles. Now, we have this side is the front, this is the back that will go along the grill, and this is the top that's going to go under the shelf. So take your side that has the, if you have a side that didn't match up quite as well, that's the side to use for this step. So, so I'm going to put glue in that corner. You know, it's okay if you put in more glue than you need because this is not going to show. It's going to be underneath. Now I'm also going to dip these in my glue, that top edge. There, and I want this one here, and it should look like this at this point. Now this glue needs to set up, and I think I am going to clamp this just to make sure that I keep really good contact with that side of the of the shelf. This is our shelf. So that's going to glue to glue dry now, at least enough that nothing will shift. And then when that's done, I'll come back and we'll go to the next step. All right, my glue is set up enough that I'm ready to put this on to my grill. Now I have my grill here and I have a roll of tape, just something that's big enough that you can set your grill in so it will stay put. Um, that way it'll stand and not fall over before this gets dry. So we're, let's go ahead and test fit first. I want to put this, so I can show you guys, so that I have this lined up. I want to line up the bottoms of these side pieces with the bottom of the grill, and I want to make sure that the top is straight and not going above the rim of the grill, and it should fit pretty well. Now our contact points should be the back of this, yeah. 
and I will probably have to do my final lining up off camera, but you'll get an idea, you'll get a pretty good idea of how I've got it, and there will be pictures on the blog. That's right where I want it. So let's see if I can turn it without it falling or moving. So that's how it's going to look. I'm going to let this glue dry. Um, I'm going to try and let it dry all the way. We are running late for the video. This may be as far as we get today. In fact, I think it is. I think next week we'll have to finish up because like I said earlier in the video, I think I had a sore throat most of the week and I couldn't talk for a couple of days. So I'm running way behind. So we'll let this dry. I'll show you what it looks like when it's dry. And then we'll be ready to come back next week and get this, all the rest of the details on. So I'll see you when this dries. All right, so we're calling it an end for today's video simply because I am out of time. I'd really hope to get further, but it just didn't happen. There was too many things interfering with filming this week. So we will probably finish up next week. Um, in the meantime, be sure and hop over to the blog post, check out the photos and more information over there. If you like the video, be sure and hit the like button, leave me a comment. Maybe you have the idea for the next video that I do. Let me know what you want to see and maybe you'll see it on the channel soon. Uh, if you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you to hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching today, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!